Hey Nick! Yeah Nick? I was thinking, what if we made some bookcases? Sounds kind of boring. We could make it harder and add walnut? Ooh yeah, walnut could be really cool, but how do we do a bookshelf without sides? Let's draw that up. When I think of bookshelf, I automatically think of boring, but if we take out the sides in the back, there will be not one bookshelf, but three. Now this kind of poses some problems. See, none of the parts are self-supportive, so we're gonna have to take some measures to keep it from folding in on itself. But this is getting kind of messy, so let's go ahead and take it to the computer where I can show you better. So you put any weight in these and they just fold over. The technique I'll be using to stiffen those, on the side there you'll see those fin shapes. Now those are called strong backing and they effectively double the thickness of the outer boards. Now we'll connect all of the bookshelves together with what I'm going to call bridges for lack of a better term. And to keep the center from sagging over time with load, I'm going to add in this design element that serves as kind of a reverse version of the strong back. Now let's put it all together. And that doesn't look so boring. Let's build it. Welcome back to yet another build. I am so pleased that you're here and crank up those smell meters because this week we're working with one of my favorite species and that is black walnut. In this case, we're starting off by milling, as always, eight quarter Eastern black walnut. And eight quarter just means that it's two inches thick when it's rough milled. As you can see, very excited. Since my joiner has some shorter beds on it, I'm gonna go ahead and straight line rip all of this with a, a track saw and that'll give me a straight enough edge to go ahead and start joining. So I'm gonna be sawing these eight quarter boards in half and as you open those up, they're gonna mirror across the center line, which I think will be a really, really nice touch for the sides and shelves of this bookcase. Cool, so let's do that. So ideally all the lumber comes from the same log, but the next best thing is to take your sequential matches out of the same board. Now I wish resawing went that quickly. It's interesting, as you cut the board in half, you're releasing so much tension. So you can see these straight boards turned into bows. And you get that every time that a board is resawn. So now that the sides are resawn, we can resaw all of the material for the shelves. Now the shelves are just going to be boxes that are hung on the verticals. And I love this resawing because it's kind of like getting two boards set for every one. This little bandsaw may not look like much, but it is a workhorse. It did about 250 board feet in a few days, actually a week here. And to get rid of that bow, we're just gonna do a quick pass over the joiner and through the planer for thickness. And then we can get all of our panels glued together. The longer the board, the more you're going to see some deformities in the panels after you resaw them. This might be the only occasion that I would leave. You can see there's still some bow left in these. And normally I wouldn't let this go, but I wanted to maintain thickness. And since we're using those strong backs, it's going to straighten those back out. And if anything, a little bow in the opposite direction of the load, uh, having that tension in the board can do nothing but help in this case. So now that the panels are together, we can go ahead and get them sized down to width and bust out the heavy hitter, the big planer. Um, to just clean up the panels. Now the top edge needs a little bit of a profile. I didn't want to go straight up with them. So I sort of just eyeballed this rounded over profile for the top and I think that'll look nice. I always aim to balance out any piece, especially where there's a lot of something, in this case a lot of square blockiness, to just kind of counterbalance that with a little bit of rounded and softness around the edges. The only dimension that I was given by the client that was an absolute was the interior spacing needed to be exactly at 11 inches. And now that everything's thickness to its final thickness, I can go ahead and lay that out. I used a story stick to 
get the layout and then transferred one as the template over to the other side so that everything lines up in the end. We have 432 dovetails to cut. Woohoo! I love dovetails. But how the heck am I gonna get all those dovetails cut this year? Some projects have a lot of variety. This one happens to have just a little bit of repetition, so I hope you're still with me and hang around to see how this all comes together. Any time in the past, this would have crippled me and I would have had to charge way too much, but I've got the panel router. And for all of you hand tool folks that wanna see me swing a chisel and a mallet, don't worry, it's coming. Put this one on easy mode to get all of these busted out. Actually did it all in a day, which is absolutely insane. It could easily take me a whole month to cut and fit all of these by hand. So you can see the advantage of this in a, a working shop. So we cut all of the tails first on the tail boards and then the pins on the pin boards. And it's as easy with this fence as just cut one side, flip it, cut the other side. And in really no time at all, I've got all of the pins and tails cut for all of the little cubbies for the shelves on the bookcase and next we'll move on to the maple segments which are going to be done kind of similarly but you'll see where i came it up on some problems now since the dovetail bit is a quarter inch going through this maple was a struggle so i decided just to go ahead and help out the machine a little bit and pre-cut and remove some of those that waste on the table saw So this is really hard maple, hard, hard maple. And so instead of trying to get that kind of depth out of the panel router on the pins, I'm just gonna take and uh, cut a little shelf. So these will be sort of a, uh, a shouldered or stepped dovetail. Um, and they'll just be about a quarter inch thick. And we'll do that on the table saw. Cut. So now the templates don't work on the panto router. So we're gonna have to transfer all of these to the pin boards and I'll probably just undersize on the panto and come back through and uh, pare down those cheeks with a chisel. Ugh. So first things first, we're gonna mock everything up. Get those transfers over. You can see the panel router cut just a little bit outside of those. Um, and then to get the pins on the far outside, the panel router is not really designed for 12 inch boards. I think it's maximum is eight inches. So I'm just going to shift over and use this zero clearance as the guide for which to line up the outside pins. So with the outside pins, cut out. I don't have to do anything to the outermost, but then I just come back through and pair all of the cheeks down. Now when I say cheeks, cheeks just means on the sides and then if I was chopping uh, the shoulders, the shoulders are going to be down against the ingrain. Yay, dovetails. Well, that made for a cool shot, but ergonomically, I must be getting old because that was really uncomfortable. So we're gonna do the rest of them standing up and it's kind of nice. It put everything in the leg vise and it gets it right there in your face and you can see all the layout lines. I like it. And we're going for a tight fit here because Lightwoods 
show all of the errors. There is no hiding any gaps in light species dovetails. Boxes are done, so let's get back to those strong backs. Now, the easy way to approach this for me, I could have gone through and datoed out, done, done stop datos for all of these. I decided just to do a dado all the way through with the dado stack on the table saw, come back through and clean up the bottoms, get everything down to a uniform thickness using my router pointing here, uh, OG router as I like to call it. And then we're just gonna go ahead and clean up the shoulders on the strong backs with a shoulder plane, get those down to the perfect thickness so they slide right into those dados. We'll go ahead and cut the profile on the strong backs, which I thought would look cool, again with that rounded, offsetting the blocky squareness of the bookcase itself and then fill in the parts of the dado that are not filled with strong back. Now we're just gonna again cut all these on the bandsaw. So the curvature on them is the same. So when you're looking head on, they all look pretty uniform down the side. Now that the strong backs are done, it's time to get into attaching the boxes to the vertical sides of the bookcase itself. Uh, now this is pretty tough. I'm not using screws. Hardware is almost never an option. And in this case, I'm gonna use the mechanical advantage of a sliding dovetail along with the adhesive power of some hide glue. And this is gonna hold those cubes nice and tight to the sides and keep them from falling off which is great that's always the goal is to not have stuff fall apart and one thing i like to think of when i'm building stuff is okay what is this going to look like in 50 years 100 years and if i go about it in this way or that way does it seem like it's going to be still around in the future and if it doesn't seem like it's gonna be sturdy enough to withstand that kind of time frame, then I try something else, which is why we use dovetails for all the cases here. Now I can start to see the light at the end of the tunnel. The uppermost cubes of the bookcase are going to be open, so three-sided boxes. And we're just gonna profile the edges so they match that which we put on the sides of the bookcases. Now we've got lots and lots of parts here, but this is where all of this work starts to pay off. The sliding dovetails slide right into the sides. The dovetails for the cases go together nice and tidy. Oh, starting to get lost in all these parts. We're almost there though. Um, I've got to get the interiors pre-finished. First, I wanna take a little trim off the back and put a small profile on the front of the boxes on both the verticals and the bridges. Then we'll go ahead and get the inside sanded, finished, and then we can glue and assemble and do the final finish and it'll be a wrap. For all these little parts, there has been no better addition than this vacuum press. It's so cool to be able to hold something still without having to worry about messing up the backside of it as you're sanding the other side on, you know, there's chips on the table or whatever. And as I was going along here, there's quite a few 
I mean, there's a couple knots. The, the grade of lumber that I usually buy has pretty minimal defects in it. Uh, but these were a little unsightly, so instead of filling with epoxy, I decided that I just wanted to put a little patch in there. Epoxy probably would have been easier, but this looks cooler on video, so it's all for you guys. And a little bit for my OCD. on stacks. All right, last thing is that bow-shaped strong back that we're putting on the inside of the center stack. We're gonna segment that out, put it inside the boxes, alakazam, and I'm just gonna use some domino joinery, floating tenons to get this going. And where you've got a little mood change here, it was 108 degrees in Portland, Oregon, which is just ridiculous. And I was sweating my balls off. <laughs> Doing a shellac base coat and pre-finishing everything. I've got everything masked off and we can go ahead and start to assemble. Now I didn't finish the outsides because there's gonna be some cleanup after these dovetails are put together, just flushing all of the tails and pins and I'm using all of the varieties of glue for no particular reason. Little hide glue, little bit of this quick tack tight bond is. Start off with a two pound cut brushed on with a foam brush and then finish off with a little bit of Osmo. And I present to you one not so boring, pretty sweet bookshelf. I appreciate you watching. If you aren't already, get subscribed, hit that like button. If you liked the video, if you disliked it, go ahead and hit the dislike button two times. We'll catch you on the next build. Got some really cool stuff coming for you guys. See you next time.